and control your life with a Generac Automatic Home Standby Generator. Nothing outlasts Energizer Ultimate Lithium. Hey, you can't do that. Can can he do that? Uh, yeah, he's good. <clears throat> Energizer Ultimate Lithium. It's the number one longest lasting battery. Today's Best Western rewards you in a flash. Get a free night fast with points that never expire at over 4,200 hotels worldwide. And get double rewards points on every stay. Book now at bestwestern.com. Oats seem pretty simple, right? They're actually kind of extraordinary. See, oats contain a soluble fiber called beta-glucan. Beta what? Stay with me here. This is where it gets interesting. This fiber really doesn't like cholesterol, so it traps some of the bad cholesterol and shows it a thing or two. Making Quaker Oats a delicious part of a heart-healthy diet. High five, fiber. surge scenario is possibly going to end up being historic. You've got to get out right now. We have a historic storm that is going to be coming ashore in the Florida Panhandle today, this afternoon. I would say between 1 and 4 p.m. is when it's going to come in. And right now it's forecasted to come in as a Category 4, 145 mile an hour winds. We have never seen a Category 4 come in, okay, to the panhandle of Florida. Not in October, not in any season. They've all been Cat 3 or lower. Never have we had a Cat 4 here. And by the way, there's only been four Category 4 landfalls in the, month, in the entire, uh, you know, history in the month of October. Only four. The last one, Hazel, back in 1954, that was in the Carolinas. So let's talk about some of the threats that we have today. Because it's not only here where I am in Port St. Joe, Panama City Beach, uh, Apalachicola, it's inland as well, and all the way over into, you know, Savannah and Charleston, South Carolina, because this thing is going to race through the southeast and bring with it the threat for severe weather. Okay, the most prolific hurricane, by the way, was Hurricane Ivan, which made landfall in Alabama, but tore up Pensacola and uh, produced over 100 tornadoes. Now, as Michael comes in, it's going to be probably in between myself and Jim Cantori in Panama City Beach, or maybe over one of us, but it's going to be within that, we think, 30 to 40 mile an hour range. But it's the bands that are going to be in the right front quadrant coming in that are going to cause a threat for tornadoes from South Carolina, Georgia, into Florida. That right front quadrant. And the winds, first of all, just coming off the smooth ocean, then they hit the friction of the land, but also winds at the mid-levels from another direction are going to cause that spin. So that's why we do have the potential for tornadoes. Torcons of four here into the southeast, a 40% chance of a tornado in a 50 mile radius. And that's for Georgia, Alabama, South Carolina, and on into Florida. Tomorrow, as everything moves into the Carolinas, that's where we have the possibility. By the way, this still could be a tropical storm over the Carolinas. So power outages could happen for you. Now, tornadoes with Florence, look at the track of Florence. 24 uh, reported tornadoes. And I really hate to compare storms because they are all so very different. But the only reason I want to compare Michael and Florence right now is to say that Florence was moving extraordinarily slow in the single digits. It was a rainmaker, 30 plus inches of rain, and the pack came in and went down and back up from the Carolinas. This, that came as a category one. This is a category four, and guess what? We still have that threat for tornadoes. It's moving 12, 13 miles an hour. It's coming in from a completely different direction, completely different state. So, Jim, no matter the hurricane, they always have that threat for tornadoes. Are we going to see an Ivan producer? Let's hope not. 
Yeah, and again, Steph, it's, it's on the right side of the hurricane, right? It's on the, the right front quadrant of the hurricane. Yeah. Let's talk about this thing as it moves inland, though, because uh, unlike Florence that just came in and sat there and actually had a tornado threat with it for two and a half days, this is, this is gone in a day, all right, in the areas that it's going to hit the hardest. So this is really going to come in and literally sucker punch the Northeast Gulf, South Georgia, and then be out of the way. By tomorrow morning, the sun could be out here. All right, isn't that amazing? In 24 hours, uh, things are going to be completely different. In the op it's really just a quick hitting storm, but it's going to be a hell of a hit at that. You're talking about winds that could gust, uh, you know, over 150 miles per hour with this. And the fact that it's going to speed up and get a little injection from the jet stream means it's not going to wind down very quickly. So this 200 mile wind field uh, does shrink. But remember, upon landfall, that deepest core, that intense hurricane wind field actually does spread out a little bit. So that's something to watch, all right? And then it holds together, maybe. We may be seeing hurricane force winds all the way across South Georgia, all right? Believe it or not. And then into Columbia, Charleston, Wilmington, Raleigh. You don't need a 100-mile-an-hour wind to produce wind damage. You don't need even a 65-mile-an-hour wind. If you've got that kind of shaking and gushing of the winds, especially if the soil gets wet, and we know how wet the soil is, that'll be interesting to watch. What's going to happen in eastern North and South Carolina where there is still standing water in areas where do we get 30, 40 mile per hour winds that just push these trees over? There could be a bigger wind threat in Florence's precip area than there is potentially in central and eastern Georgia just because of the soil conditions. That'll be something to watch this afternoon, Kelly, uh, as we watch uh, that thing move up and certainly overnight tonight into South Carolina and North Carolina. And Indeed. the different types of trees that we're dealing with as well, especially through Georgia. The palm trees can handle it a little bit better than some of the other trees. But again, it may not take much wind to topple some of these trees on the power lines. So as Michael continues its approach toward the Florida panhandle, its impacts already being felt on Florida's west coast, including right here in Tarpon Springs. This is about 40 miles to the northwest of Tampa. Storm surge, high tide inundating the streets there and this is just the beginning so we've got a ways to go we've got a major hurricane making landfall in the florida panhandle today and then it's all about further inland places like atlanta i know the worst of the weather will be south and east where we do have a state of emergency in effect but still it's going to get windy tonight with that rain continuing right through your morning commute tomorrow so here's a look at all the advisories even as far north as wilmington you've got tropical storm warnings in effect so yes the carolinas will be dealing with the wind the tropical storm conditions hurricane warnings still showing up in the purple along with those storm surge warnings. And here's a look at the timing for the state capital, Tallahassee, talking about those winds really gusting pretty high through, through tomorrow night. And the rainfall will be five to eight inches of rainfall. And of course, right at the coastline, there will be that heavy rain threat as well as the storm surge. Back to you, Jim. All right, Kelly, yeah, uh, we continue to watch uh, Michael for you here. Still intensifying, pressure down to 937. If that land falls at 937 or lower, that will be the lowest pressure ever in an October hurricane, ever. You never forget your first race. And you never back down from the next. You're the brotherhood of muscle. Okay, everyone, our mission is to provide complete balanced nutrition for strength and energy. Yay! Great tasting Ensure with 9 grams of protein and 26 vitamins and minerals. Ensure now up to 30 grams of protein for strength and energy. I wanted more from my COPD medicine. That's why I've got the power of one, two, three medicines in Trilogy. The only FDA-approved three-in-one COPD treatment. Trilogy, the power of one, two, three. and the power of one, two, three, I'm breathing better. Trelegy works three ways. To open airways, keep them open, and reduce inflammation for 24 hours of better breathing. Trelegy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Trelegy is not for asthma. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trelegy more than prescribed. Trelegy